Yo, this is Steve Bloom, and you're watching Moana Nui Podcast. We'll be starting soon. Don't go anywhere. I'm Veronica Taylor, and for myself and Ash Ketchum, I just want to say, Moana Nui, I choose you! Hello, hello, and welcome to a very special episode of the Moana Nui podcast. I am Chana Lawson, also known as CC the Geek, founder, president, and CEO of HBCU Con, activist extraordinaire. Um, and I also, before I get into announcing our guest host, want to give a huge shout out to the founders, actually Moana Nui McAdams, who is the founder of this here podcast, and her wonderful partner in crime, Dana Morgan, shout out to y'all. Wishing you all well and safe travels in your journeys this week. So um, before I introduce our guest host for the evening, I wanted to give you all a little spiel about what I do um, or my passion project that is the HBCU convention, celebrating and bridging the gap between historically black colleges and the geek community to bring you an authentic homecoming experience that everyone can enjoy at, um, at HBCU convention. We have a Kickstarter campaign that is live right now we have about 22 days left to go to raise 16k we could really use your help and support please make sure you click on the link and um and yeah share contribute uh, every dollar helps and it takes a community to build a community so I, um just in advance want to thank you all so much for your support of hbcu con 2023 and thank you all for your support of this past convention um which was very successful and just so grateful for that now let's get into it, right? I want to introduce one of my favorite people who is just a dynamic, dynamic person um, and a, just a really powerhouse in her own right. The president and CEO of the Center for Asian and Pacific American Women, um, the Sue Ann Hong. How you doing, Sue Ann? Thank you so much, Cece, for that wonderful introduction. So appreciative of all of the work that you're doing. Amazing. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm really excited about is, you know, that Thanksgiving is coming and I'm going to call this the Friendsgiving episode because oh, that's adorable. everybody, I think that's on here, I would say are person, not only like amazing women and leaders, they're just good friends of mine. Right. And so I always say, let's act like we have a cup of coffee, we have a round table, and we're having a chit chat. Love it. So it's all about organization tonight. Oh my gosh. I can, especially as the holidays are coming, right? Yes. So much going on. And um, there's a lot of wonderful opportunity here for a great dialogue around organization because I certainly can use that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> on so many levels. And I'm glad that I, I'm not alone. In that, Absolutely. In that. And Cece, I don't know about you, but many times when I think about organization, your your automatic thought is, okay, like doing, like doing, like mm -hmm. uh, literally at work, how do I keep myself organized and as well as at home? But we don't always talk about organizing your mental wellness and self-care. Mm. And so this is another aspect as we were talking last week, Mm -hmm. um, my, our, you know, both uh, Blossom and Marcy, we were talking about this particularly, especially with all of the uprise in mental wellness. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we're going to have some conversation around that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to that. And I think it's very much necessary, especially now more than ever. Absolutely. How do you, before we start, how do you take care of yourself and how do you organize your own mental wellness? Oh, gosh. Um, I feel like I don't do it very well. <laughs> or I feel like I could definitely do it better. Um, I'm very much about it's it's a give and take for me because I sometimes I process things internally. Sometimes I just need to completely unplug 
Yeah. Um, and to the point where I I like sat in silence in my room for like hours because I have just been um, dealing with so much sensory overload that I didn't yeah. even want the TV on in the background. Um, Absolutely. That's kind of how it's been. But then at the same time, I also like to one talk to um, my therapist who I love very dearly and um and then just really being in community with people like to having yeah. conversations like this talking to people who um you know keep their head on a swivel and are aren't afraid to be vulnerable and and are really kind of what keep me going and also seeing the culmination of the work that I've done and seeing how yeah. it impacts other people also Absolutely. keeps me going for sure. Yeah. Well, Cece, thank you so much for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now you guys let me introduce you to my guests. Let me start off with a good friend of mine, Blossom Martindale. She is, I don't know, she's got like seven different titles, but business consultant, <laughs> CEO, BTI. Um, after designing clothes for the fashion industry, Blossom switched to influencing lives through coaching, consulting, insurance, and financial planning. Blossom and I met at the Northeast, and we actually were peers. We worked together for many years, but we really didn't know each other well. But we both somehow ended up in Atlanta, and she saw me on social media and reached oh, out to me. And we said, oh, my God, we need to connect. And ever since then, she's been like, you know, my sister from another mother. That's right. So, <laughs> Blossom, welcome. Thank you, Sue Ann. Thanks for having me on. And, you know, you've always been my rock star. You know, I consider you a mentor. You've always been there for me. So I was so excited to reconnect, you know, when I got when we were here in Georgia. So I am um, thrilled uh, always to be in your presence. And to do whatever I can. So uh, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. And by the way, Blossom runs her own company, Kegazelle Coaching and Consulting Group, and recently formed a partnership called Team Technology Inc. Our team access and is the CEO of a small startup company called Brickio Technology. So, and then plus she raises a couple kids, like, you know, like <laughs> write the book, is an author, you know, just a few things. Just, so, a few. Welcome, just, just a few. Next, let yeah. me introduce you to another good friend of mine, Marcy Thomas, CCIM, CCMS, Vice President of Portfolio <laughs> Loan Officer at Grand Bridge Real Estate Capital LLC, BBNT, now Truist. And let me tell you, Marcy is, you know, she's like, you have to watch her because she's this quiet force that kind of comes behind you all of a sudden. It's like, bam. There she is, and you're already like friends with her, and you're doing stuff for her. You don't even know. You turn your head, and you're saying yes to things you didn't even know you wanted to do. <laughs> so I, she's she's a quite the influencer and just a freaking rock star, I have to say. So welcome to our our podcast. And let me tell you, she serves in several roles to support Truist Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion initiatives in the Georgia region. She's the co-chair of the Disabilities BRG Georgia region, promoting and welcome of the different um, able need community for the combined heritage, uh, BBNT and SunTrust Bank. So they they combined obviously to, to become Truest. And before uh, she held both corporate and regional leadership roles with Asian Pacific Islander Women's Information Network and Disabilities business resource group and you're going to hear much more about her journey but i'm so excited to have you thank you there's only a few people i will let out me from the witness protection program <laughs> <laughs> wait who's the one that needs to be protected <laughs> uh, so dana yes dana, a powerful amazing morgan <laughs> who are you <laughs> well um go ahead I was going to say, Dana's not going to be on camera tonight, yes. but trust me, that will not make a difference in how <laughs> all the wonderful things she's going to share, but she's the executive assistant at Kimberly Clark and of course the co-founder of the Moana Nui podcast. And I thought it was really important for Dana to be on here because she supports many people 
and I've seen her organize and it is amazing. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that she had her voice in this conversation because I think we could learn a lot from Dana as well. So welcome everyone. You ready to get started? Yes. Yes. All right, so let me start off by asking each of you just kind of about your heritage and just about some personal background and just how you got to this point and where you're at. So let me start with Blossom. Well, you, you'll probably hear my little sing song accent, you know, originally from the Caribbean, St. Lucia, the best little island uh, where everybody goes to get married. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, but I, I migrated here um, when I graduated high school. I was almost 15. And um, yes, we do graduate pretty early. Uh, either that or I was a geek, one or the other. And um, came here, um, joined my family, and uh, they told me I was too young to go to college. So, you know, I, you know, putzed around a little bit and you know, did a little bit of learning um, and then decided to go to fashion school because I, you know, like that's what I like doing. But my background, um, you know, is a little bit of mixture. Uh, we do speak French Creole. Uh, so um, unfortunately, I never taught my kids, but, you know, I do speak it. Um, I was raised primarily by my grandmother. Uh, she passed away uh, about 10, 10 years ago. And, um, you know, really miss her. And she was like, you know, the matriarch of the family. And um, she raised about 10 of us in a one bedroom house. <laughs> so we would sleep around in beds and, um, you know, um, just really do things to entertain each other. And, you know, today when I walk through my, you know, my home, I really think about that time. And it's, it's really gratifying. And that's why I give back so much because, um, it's, it really does remind me of, of where I came from. Um, here in the US, I, um, I do have um, a bonus daughter and my son and um, daughter, and um, they do keep me very, very busy. Uh, their dad passed away about eight years ago. And, um, you know, we, they've been my troopers ever since. Uh, we do have a, a grandson and a granddaughter and so they keep me, um, you know, uplifted um, and, and I, I do want more. And I keep telling my son and daughter the same thing. I do want something more. Uh, and I can't wait to actually leave the nest a little bit. I really do want to leave the nest. Um, and, and so I'm hoping to do that pretty soon once my son leaves. But that's just a little bit about me. And, um, you know, but happy to be a West Indian in these are United States. Absolutely. Hey, we are all about bringing diversity in our programming because that is very important. Yes. So thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself, Blossom. Marcy, <laughs> how about you? Can you share a little bit about your background and heritage as well? Sure. <clears throat> so I was born in Seoul, Korea, and I was adopted by a white Jewish family in upstate New York. So I was brought up very westernized, which um, confuses many people when they see me, but as soon as they hear me, they get it. They know. Uh, I migrated down south here to Atlanta, thinking that there were going to be robust jobs uh, right before the Olympics. And the roommates that I had, they up and, they up and outed right after the Olympics. I stayed. Um, and so I'm kind of a late bloomer. Uh, Self-disclose that all the time. I, I run in really great circles, but I'm always the the junior odd bird in the room. So just being able to soak up really good energy and, and have real experiences and real relationships with people, I think that's how I get some of these invitations. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, for me, it's it's about opportunity. It's about connecting people. It's about everybody's got a story and, which makes them unique, but you gotta be a friend to have a friend. And mm. when you align yourself with the right people, then I think that um, we can do more good than not. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marcy. And by the way, I want the audience to know when I reached out to Blossom and Marcy separately, they both thought I was inviting them just to be an <laughs> audience member. And I just started like, when did you ever like, you know, know me to reach out to you and say, yeah, just come and be an audience, right? No, 
They, so they're, oh, you want me to be on the podcast? Yes. Absolutely. If only I knew. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. All right, Dana, I know some of many of your audience members have heard your story, but not everybody has. Yes. So I want you to still share your background and heritage as well. Uh, I come from a very mixed background. I was born and raised in in Hawaii. Um, my dad was, uh, he's retired military, uh, came to the uh, islands and everything. Uh, of course, he uh, during his service, he met my mom. And of course, later came me and my siblings. Um, but one thing um, I always tell people that my parents um, wanted me not to have a island mindset, kind of having a stay in the box mindset. So they wanted me to always see beyond it and learn beyond just the islands. So uh, they'll make sure I befriended people of different religions backgrounds uh, whenever my dad will have a chance to be stationed anywhere overseas to have allowed me and my siblings to go there so we can learn about that culture and such and then of course um you know fast forward um today i am an uh, of course an executive assistant at kimberly clark um and along with that i work with our employee resource groups uh primarily making uh, the content for our uh apex erg which is our asian professionals for excellence and uh trying to bring it out a different aspects and sue ann has been a guest of several uh contents that we have um had for our employees uh along with that i also do photography outside of that and photograph different conventions like dragon con momocon and i've been done uh, some of my pictures have been featured with DC Comics and, of course, working on the podcast, but I also am the line producer for Karen Ashley, the Yellow Power Ranger uh, uh, show. So I do that on Tuesdays. And then on top of that, I also work with CC and several other conventions um, to help their conventions in different aspects and then do a little voice acting also. So... I want the audience to listen to all three of my guests here because none of them are just doing one thing. Yeah. I want to that. And the fact is you still only have 24 hours in a day. So my question yeah. starting with Marcy is, Marcy, tell us a little bit about your responsibilities and like during the pandemic, did anything change? And if so, how are you managing it? <laughs> <clears throat> So I, I think we're coming back live again. And so I'm coming in hot today. I, I mentioned to y'all before the call that I'm coming from an event. And prior to the pandemic, I was out maybe three to five times a week at networking events, uh, socials, luncheons, breakfasts, on top of doing my job, which is commercial real estate. Um, but what really fires me up is all the community affairs and everything that we do as a bank and out in the community. So I probably should preface this with the comments and opinions voiced by me today are not of my employer. They're strictly of me. Um, but there was a lot of a lot of activities. So as things slowed and shut down, um, so did so did I. I took that time to hibernate and to not have to be running 100 miles per hour in the slow lane, exhausted all the time. But then everybody wanted to connect and see my face on a Zoom call, you know, size, you know, size up the uh, yoga pants, size down. It's just like the, the face, you can't hide the face. <laughs> so it was it was a little overwhelming to get readjusted to be more active in hibernation than it was in person. Um, so I, I found that I had changed. I was growing in a different direction, not just in the yoga pants, but I was growing. <laughs> <laughs> I was growing in a way that I wanted to be more intentional with my time. Yeah. Well, I used to be the yes girl and show up everywhere that I was asked to be. I really had to um, take some inventory of myself and could I handle it? Um, you know, uh, today I find myself rejuvenated and excited to be back doing these things, but learning what I've learned in the last two years, I've got to pace myself. Um, it's okay to say no, set those soft boundaries 
and know what you're capable of because you cannot say yes to everything and fully thrive. So that's kind of my journey through the pandemic and what I've learned. And, you know, if I can keep myself in check and keep myself in balance, go forward. Uh, I think it's the best of both worlds. Well, first of all, beyond the yoga pant comment, I think that the fact that you are able to say no, that takes, I mean, it's hard to say no, everybody. It, it is because you want to say yes to everything. You want to be able to go everywhere, but it is not just, it's just not possible. And so for you to be able to have that awareness and I think to regulate that and be intentional about yourself and your time, that's huge. Um, and I knew you, you know, more than two years ago. So this is huge. I mean, because before you did say yes to pretty much everything. So this is huge. So Blossom, what about you? What's been your journey through the pandemic? Well, you know, I, there, there's some very practical things for me. And, um, you know, apart from just mentally sometimes feeling um, stir crazy when at first we had to stay in and then feeling liberated, oh, I can go out. And going out was just, you know, early in the morning, going out, watching the sun rising. Oh, I love that. There was nobody around really, you know, when you go out. And the big change for me was when I go out, when I go out now in the morning, oh gosh, there's too many people on the road. So that's a big change, right? And I, I'm like, okay, do I want to see all these folks on the road? And now all my serenity is gone. Uh, so mentally I have to deal with that, right? So it's a big difference. And these are some small things. Like I got up today and I had to get ready for this, right? And, you know, I had to curl. I only curl the front of my hair, right? So the back of my hair is either hating or loving me because, you know, I don't worry about the back. I just do the front. Uh, so... I mean, you know, girls got to do what girls got to do, um, you know, so I look great on Zoom and I love it. But if I have to go out, uh, gosh, now I got to have everything done. You know, I have to, you know, make sure the edges are right and everything. So that's a big change, you know, from <laughs> pand the pandemic days to now. And even just wearing heels, you know, I used to go to several different events and I used to wear my three to four inch heels. Um, and now going out in heels and having to stand and walk, I have to really think about these things. And yes, it's something small. It seems almost impractical, but just standing in heels even, it's, uh, it's a challenge for a girl uh, because okay. now I'm out of practice. <laughs> First of all, I don't think I've ever worn four inch heels. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a shoe girl. I'm a shoe girl. I love my I heels. And I mean, no, I love my high heels and I've always loved them. But, you know, since the pandemic, I've just gotten used to low heels and fuzzy slippers. Right. And, yes. uh, you know, we, we've all gotten used to that. And yes, we did grow a little bit and not wearing high heels. Now it's flattened. So your feet kind of expanded in your shoes now. So it is. It's a little bit different now. So the, the journey for me, you know, through pandemic, post-pandemic, even going out now to visit clients, it's just very different. Um, you know, I don't want to get dressed up anymore, <laughs> maybe just from here up, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Those are all I, get that. I get that totally. It yeah. feels weird to have to dress from head to toe now. It yeah. does. It really does. So Absolutely. <laughs> But Blossom, we're fun sized. Love it. Race it. <laughs> we don't have to size up to anything. <laughs> oh my God. So true. I just... so true. <laughs> oh my God. Dana, how about you? Tell us about your journey since you have, like, I heard you at least mention about six things that you're doing. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it was, as everyone said, it was a transition, especially with the pandemic, because especially events and conventions, those were all put on pause because of the pandemic. So the photography side, the event planning side, uh, I wasn't doing as much outside of work, um, but work still, uh, luckily my company was one of those that already had the infrastructure set up for us to work remotely. So we didn't have the horrible jolt that a lot of companies had trying to 
all of a sudden trying to set up virtual uh, platforms and get everybody be able to connect um, you know, securely from their homes and such. So we, that was an easier transition. But for someone who I am an ambient vert, um, stronger on the introverted side, so being able and being executive assistant, being able to work from home was just like magic uh, because <laughs> you're not having someone stopping you every time while you're doing something or you're getting pulled in different directions. Like I, I will calculate at least 30 to 40 percent of my time. I'm away from my desk helping somebody who is lost who's trying to find a conference room, who's trying to do these things. So I gained that much, that much time back. So I was able to give more to my company by helping more with our ERGs, uh, finding ways to elevate what we were doing, um, even from a virtual aspect. And uh, then also working with some of the conventions, seeing, hey, which ones were trying to do something virtually, how I can help, you know, do virtual panels or something like that. But um, it was funny because before pandemic, me and Moana and another friend of ours was talking about how we, there was a lack of resources giving voices not only to women, but women um, that are part of the BIPOC community. And, you know, we were kind of, you know, talking back and forth of things that we would like to see for both indigenous cultures, uh, for uh, the Black community uh, and people of color uh, communities. And then the pandemic happened. And then I get a message from Moana. I was like, hey, sis, um, you know, I st I'm starting this podcast. And I'm like, oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> and she was just like, love to get some ideas. Of course, she knew that, you know, um, you know, I was working on different things. So I, you know, will introduce her to some guests to have on the show. And then she was like, hey, whenever someone you know, I'd love for you to co-host. And then I will co-host after uh, two or three times. And then she's like, yeah, you might as well stay on the show. Uh, so, so that's how. And then the podcast allowed me to kind of keep that connection to people, but in a different way of just being like a Zoom meeting. We were giving voices to things that of the community that they wanted to hear find out stuff that they wanted to learn about that they couldn't go in person to attend something because of the pandemic. So this podcast right here became that outlet for so many and we continue to grow it and build it. And of course, when the pandemic, uh, well, it's not over yet, but you know, people are, the, you know, world is coming back, but um, it's one of those that I have still the hybrid form at work. And then still, you know, I, I agree with Blossom. I tried for a event to wear heels for the first time in two years. And my feet was like, no, no, go ahead and get you some flats. Uh, so that is something I have to adjust to is that. And then, of course, like everybody dealt with the pandemic weight and everything um, that we have, you know, we're looking at how we can uh revitalize ourselves and not be so focused on the pounds but um our mental emotional and physical health more overall absolutely and one thing that i or a couple things i heard you say dan was one was that you actually gained some efficiency sounds like because you kind of no longer have to do some of this uh work and tasks that doesn't really add to what you need to do on a yes. regular day and exactly. second is the fact that you expanded your community with this podcast and all of the topics actually, including tonight's topic, all came from audience. We actually surveyed yes. the audience and asked them what they wanted to hear. So that's that's been really fantastic. So Blossom, let me ask you, when you have competing priorities and when you have a, like, you've got probably more projects, more clients than you can manage, Walk us through what are some things you do to manage that? You know, um, a few years ago, um, I had a really great mentor um, and she taught me so much about um, uh, lean processes. So I, I got uh, my green belt, got certified in Lean Six Sigma. And uh, so I really got entrenched in 
focusing on efficiency and um, really becoming efficient at daily activities and separating out um, high income generating activities and low income generating activities. So I preach it to my clients all the time. So I really try to manage my day around those things uh, and separating that out. I have a team um, at work and I really leverage, well, what is it that I need to do to bring the business in and where can I move um, you know, the other activities and tasks off to them that they will be even more efficient at than I would. So we kind of stay in our lanes, right? And we have these processes that we're constantly looking at, you know, do we have challenges with them and should we change them? So the team, I leverage them, you know, really, really, really well. Now I do practical things like, you know, cause I'm getting a little older now, um, although I know I look like 29 still, I use my phone. I put the alarm on it all the time for everything. Uh, alarm to eat, an alarm to drink the water, alarm to, you know, just set a date with myself, get up, stretch, because we do need to make sure we do some of those things, right? Um, you know, time to meditate. Uh, sometimes it's even, you know, um, check in on my son who's here with me, um, because sometimes he forgets to eat because he's entrenched in his work. <laughs> and so I have to remind him, oh, go get the mail. <laughs> you know, I have to call him upstairs sometimes. Oh, the alarm went up. Did you forget to go take the garbage out? <laughs> you know, so it's little things like that. I <laughs> leverage my phone a lot. And <laughs> then also, I mean, I don't have an assistant. Um, and uh, my daughter's always said, you need to get an assistant. Actually, I, I have some of my clients, I, we, we get assistance for them all of the time. But um, I don't have an assistant. I actually just still leverage that team. But then also a really, really, really important thing. I live and breathe by my calendar. Everything is on my calendar. And I, I, I promise you, I even preach it to all of my clients. And it looks a hot mess to some people, but everything is color coded. Um, and even if somebody calls me unexpectedly, I might even put it on there because I go back and I look to see what happened on that day to see whether or not I was being really intentional about, um, you know, the things that I've been doing. And so, you know, in a nutshell, you know, that organization is super important, not only, you know, for the day, but also reflecting back to see what do I need to do more or less of as I move forward. And, you know, the kids, I fit in there sometimes too. So, you know, we also have intention. We, we have intention. Oh, yeah. right. yeah, I, I have them. Yeah. <laughs> We have intentional holidays. So every year we do certain things together and it's a must. And, you know, and I, I do have my, my worship days on Sundays. That's it. It's time for God. That's, that's my worship days. I don't do any work and I fellowship, spend time, you know, just in the word or with friends and family. And that's it. I love it. So I hear three things. One is everything is calendared. Number yes. two is alarm, alarm, alarm. Yes. And then there are designated priorities for certain things like Sundays. Yes. And times where you want to block off and that's regular. Yes. Consistent. Right? Okay. It's very, very consistent. I love it. All right, Marcy, what about you? How do you manage all of the things that you're doing? I can't do it by myself. I get by with a little help from my friends. I've got handlers strategically placed around the country. So, and, and I say that jokingly, but I mean it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because I'm fired up and very passionate about a lot of things that I do, I can also fizzle real quickly. So I have got to put my energy in what's going to give me more energy. And whether I put myself in time out and rest and recharge, or I go out and I volunteer, or I go out and listen to some live music, or whatever it is, you know, my decompressed time is. I've got to take care of myself. I didn't do that before. I 
very much have to put that in order. Now, Blossom, I've set my alarms and um, I think I put eating on the calendar like several times a day. Maybe that's where I, <laughs> I went wrong. But you're right. Like I follow that same model. Um, I live by my calendar and I think that I drive some of my friends batty because they're like, I don't know what I'm doing in two months. I'm like, well, here's where I'm going to be. I know where I'm going to be. And if you want to get on my calendar, then that's what we need to be doing. Um, but I've also had to learn to be gentle about that. So while it's okay for you, it may not be okay for somebody else in their space. So I call them bookmarks. Like, let's just pencil something in, you know, we'll circle back and sync up later. But um, for me to prioritize the tasks, the people, the places, the things, I, I have to utilize that as well. Um, and so from another approach is how do I, how do, I do this? Um, I had to self-disclose during the pandemic that I was challenged with things that I couldn't handle on my own. So, you know, being fully transparent with my team, with my manager, with some of my closest friends. Um, there are days that, you know, I'm trying to fight my way out of a paper bag and I do really well with it. And other days I feel like I'm suffocating in that bag. So when I can be honest and keep it real, then I've got people that are lifelines that truly have helped bless me um, with their time and their energy. So it, it really helps me to do better and to do more for others. So. Well, first of all, I can back up what Marcy says about like these bookmark situations because I'll get a ping. Where are you going to be on this date? I'm like, well, am I in the state or not in the state? You know, you got to start there. But she, I mean, she does practice what she preaches on that. And then I've heard Marcy say things like, hey, that's my afternoon of, I watch football, I watch games. So I'm just going to be hunkered at my house and I'm regenerating. I'm, I'm going to just hang out and I'm not going anywhere. So I respect that because the fact that you guys have, both of you have boundaries on certain things. I think you have to have boundaries, everyone. You have to, otherwise, you know, you're just going to ch chase the next shiny ball, right? And you're going to run yourself ragged. So I think having processes in place is helpful. I'm still learning that because I'm not, not as good with the calendar like the two of you. I'm still working on that because I don't use the alarm system like I should like the two of you. I think I need, I could learn to do that a little bit more. So Dana, what about you? How do you manage, since you manage other executives and their calendars, how do you manage yourself? Um, as far as myself, I am, <laughs> me and Moana has the ongoing joke. Uh, there's a meme out there. If, if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. Um, so <laughs> it's one of those, if you're sending, uh, you know, of course I tell people, let me know as soon as possible so I can. And first thing, whether it's personal, whether it's work related, whether it's podcast related, I block those times on the calendar, send invitations to everyone involved with it that I have their emails and stuff. So it's on the calendars because, you know, your calendar is going to give that reminder if you set for notifications to come, you know, a certain amount of time. So I always make sure 15 minutes beforehand that, you know, hey, this event is coming up so you can get ready to, you know, head to your desk or whatever so you can be there but then um i am a big believer in one note uh one note is an amazing tool it is very great for collaboration it's basically a virtual notebook uh which you have tabs and everything so you can create this i do it both for the podcast i do it for my job i do it for different projects at work uh, that way, everybody can put information regarding dis af yeah, different aspects uh, regarding that. So whether it's for the show, I have a page for each episode uh, where I put the bios in there. I put uh, each person's headshot, the graphic that we use to promote it, the links to all of the platforms that it will be promoted at, uh, that you know, OneNote is one of those that no matter where that person's located, everybody can go in and be able to work in there at the same time um, for that. And then um, I also like uh, uh, each of um, my other panelists have mentioned, you have to block time for yourself. Uh, you know, I block my, 
you know, time for me to take my break. So, and then I mark it because one thing about calendars, and if anybody's worked in the corporate world, if you're, if your calendar is just showing busy, somebody will book over. If it's showing out of office, they will not book over that because they know you're not going to be in office. So if you want someone not to book over your lunchtime, your break, mark it out of office. Therefore, no one's going to book over that time because they don't think you're going to be in the office. So do that. That's a tip from me. Um, <laughs> I do that for my leaders. I make sure their lunch are showed out of office so no one book over it. And then I also make sure at the end of the day, book at least an hour or hour and a half that you can catch up on emails and everything. And I haven't notated if people can see the calendar. It says, uh, do not book over, contact Dana if it's an urgent matter. Uh, for myself, I have it blocked as out of office. So nobody will bother me after four o'clock because it's me catching up on my emails or anything else I need to do prep for the next day. So you got to do that. And then also on your weekends, you got to give yourself time to, you know, wind down. Because I always hear people say it's hard for them to sleep because their minds are constantly going. You got to give yourself that hour or two at the end of the day to allow your mind and your body to slow down and to, you know, pr prepare for you to actually get a good night rest. So I always plan, hey, by this time, I wrap everything up. I go to bed. I sit there and read my, um, uh, I got into, during the pandemic, due to some friends, into Webtoons and these little virtual um, books. So I sit there and read a couple of chapters um, as part of my wind down. And then it's like, all right, I have my hour of reading, time for me to go to sleep. And I go to bed. So I think those elements, everybody needs to organize for themselves to give yourself that mental um, health that you need. Absolutely. I like some of the tips about being out of office because you're right, it does get trumped. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I use is, and I need to do more of this because uh, my email is just like crazy. So I use naming conventions for my folder. So I'll put like, you know, when I'm working with all these different sponsors and whatnot, I'll put corporate dash and the name of the company. Yes, exactly. Everything starts with like corporate dash, whatever. And so I just have it all in one, and then all my information for each of those companies goes in there as an example. So naming convention is helpful. It's a pain initially, but it is helpful because it is like, I, I don't need to search. I know where to go as an example. And then the second thing is one of my uh, supervisor taught me this really early on and she had this amazing capability of getting probably more work done than her peers and i'm like what are you doing and she would say that her big thing is she touches things one time so she'll touch she'll read it touch it if she can resolve it she'll resolve it right then and there but and then she won't go back now unless it's a report you're writing or whatnot and then she'll block off like enough time so she doesn't have to shift gears to different topics. She'll stay on that topic for several hours if she can to finish it. But her big thing was do not touch things more than once if possible. And I'm telling you, that's huge. So I try to practice some of those, uh, some of those things. So hopefully those are some other nuggets. So let me ask this. Um, mental health and wellness. We, we kind of got into it a little bit. We talked about organizing our lives, you know, calendaring on all of that. I want to hear more about what you're doing about your mental wellness and be specific, please, about what are you doing to manage that? And I'm going to start with Marcy. <laughs> I'm a work in progress, but I'm happy to, to be honest and transparent about uh, my journey and where I've been. You know, I, I used to think I could do everything and fly high and, and, and do it well. And I think that um, I was doing myself a disservice. I had to really check in with myself and say, am I really doing this great? <laughs> or am I just showing up? There's show, place, and win. And showing up is just, you know, sometimes it's it's good enough, but it's not for myself. Um, you know, I... I could be someplace, but you got to be present in the moment. So for me to do that is really putting myself in timeout and pausing. 
Um, I have, most large institutions have EAP, uh, employee assistance programs. And I had to learn that it's okay to not be okay some days. And um, being honest with myself and with others helps me to be more efficient. Um, Cause it's not that I'm not capable, but I might have a differently able need that day. And if I'm not willing to have that hard conversation behind closed doors with someone, they're not gonna know what's going on with me that day. Um, and it's not for the whole world to know either. It's, you know, you have a network, you have that safe space. So I have recommended to some really close friends, you know, explore those options. Don't be ashamed to say, I need a little bit more help today. Um, it, it actually is very courageous for you to acknowledge that and to move on that. So um, I'm a big fan of the EAP program and counseling. Um, you know, for my own personal circumstances, I have been in counseling for about a year now, kind of grieving the loss of a family member. And it's okay. Like some days I'm okay. Some days I'm not. Um, some days I'm better than ever. But I have to connect myself with the people and places that will help me to keep my calm, help me keep my cool, uh, put me in time out and call me on my stuff. Um, and so for mental health awareness, we had employee month, uh, October, you know, and I don't know that a lot of people really, um, are okay with themselves to be able to admit that it's not something to be ashamed of if you need extra help and extra support. Um, I have friends in different situations and, you know, for me, I, I chose career over family. I've never spawned, but somehow I give out a lot of parenting advice to my friends that have kids. I don't know why, but I think it's because I can be objective as a third person. And what sounds logical to me, um, someone who is emotionally involved in a situation may not see the clarity at that moment. Um, so you have to be well yourself. They tell you, put the face mask on yourself on a plane before you put it on someone else. And if you're always doing and, and helping others, you're not helping yourself. So um, it, it, it was a hard lesson to learn and one that I'm still practicing to say that, you know, how, do you, how did I get here in life? Um, it was really through support of others. And you can't be ashamed of that. Be proud of that and pay it forward. Um, when you see distress and you, you, you think that someone in your close circle is off, Chances are your gut, your intuition is spot on. Some people don't know how to ask for help. So I, I really do live by the model. You've got to be a friend to have a friend. Check on those uh, coworkers, family members, friends. Um, you know, you could be the lifeline of somebody who just really just needs a kind smile or just a, a little how you doing or what can I do for you today? Um, and so that's that's something that's helped me because, you know, grace and um, helping others, that, that servant leader. Oh, we just lost Marcy. I wonder if she lost her battery. But I heard several key things that I heard from Marcy. Number one is I hear more about intentionality, about how she addresses mental wellness with the tools that are available to her, including the employee assistant program, but also being really in tune with yourself is what I'm her hearing her say, is that she is very in tune with what's going on and then being vulnerable enough then to share, to say, hey, I need some help. So I think that, um, and Blossom, I don't know what you think, you know, whether or not during the pandemic, do you think that people became like gave more grace to not being okay or you know is the culture changing about you know putting yourself uh first in terms of some of these issues i really think it has um you know and i think people are are, are more open um to speaking about it right and i think even being more um uh, I'm aware of it and um, just allowing people to just feel the way that they need to uh, and even be a little bit more tolerable about it, I think, uh, which is a, a beautiful thing. Um, you know, when I think about some of the main things that I do for my own mental wellness, I, I definitely um, 
have a, a, a life coach who is, you know, a phenomenal person and uh, really helps me with just navigating some things. You know, I always said, you know, I, um, I have a, a friend, she's on here somewhere. She calls me Coach B. I said, even the coach needs a coach, right? <laughs> coach does need a coach. Well, and awesome. I your point, the best coaches, I think they have coaches. Absolutely. They should. Uh, and, um, you know, I, and I have several, it's not just one, you, you know, you should have in different capacities because even with you, Sue, and I consider you to be one of, you know, my, my mentors and coaches. And, um, I have a prayer group that I've had for many, many years since 2009. Every week we get on and we get together and, that helps me just mentally prepare for the week. Each week we kind of get together and talk through and pray through things and really just think through what we need, how we need to help each other. So that's really important to have that community and that village that help you to really do the things that you have to do. Uh, and then, you know, when I, I think about even just on my own, one of the things, and I think um, Dana said it, um, you know, it's reading. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a reading nut and I try to read something. And there's a, a there is a, um, there's a, an article out here there by Harvard. And it says, you know, if you learn something new that could sometimes cause, you know, to de-stress. And so I try to learn something new all the time. Yeah. And I try to read something new all the time. So every night before I go to bed, I am reading. And every morning I get up and I'm reading the words. So those are some really key things that help me with my mental wellness. Okay. Yeah, that's that's very helpful. I think, again, it's all, all about being intentional. Um, you yes. talked yeah. about reading. You, you're, um, I think that Sunday, um, dedicating that Sunday, especially communing in faith and all of that, I think that's huge. Yes. That was my as, deal. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. And then, um, you know, the fact that you're so deliberate with your time. I think that's one of the key things that I heard with you specifically, Blossom, is that you are very specific, like you are very intentional about your time because you're going back to looking <laughs> at your calendar and all of that, which is huge. Yeah. So sometimes my kids tell me I'm extra because, you know, I, I do fly off the handle sometimes, you know, when I can't stick to my, my time frames, but it does help. It really does help mentally to keep you sane. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dana, what about you? Uh, for myself, um, I, I go by that saying that uh, to check on your strong people that, you know, because the people you know you can always depend on and everything, they have their times that they need support too. And a lot of times people, when they're used to uh, people that are well-organized, thinking they're always strong, they, you know, they're the ones to go to for everything, but don't realize sometimes they need that also. Uh, so you do need to have that strong network or uh, the uh, people around you that, as Marcy was saying, can sense something is off on you. Uh, could be, you know, one of those that like, hey, is something going on? Pull you to the side to try to talk to you and everything. Because uh, those are the people that you definitely want to have um, to help support you um, during those times. And then one of those that know what your triggers are too. Because uh, as Marcy was saying, you know, for your mental health, know when you're going in that um, negative coping mechanism. One thing we have on our show is we have a therapist come on once a month to talk about different topics our audience asks for. And it's one of those that, you know, a lot of times we'll go into a default coping mechanism that, you know, we start getting way too busy. We're not sleeping, things like that. We need to have that the circle around us to let us know, hey, I'm pulling you back. We got to talk to you. This is what's going on. And then that way you can be, you know, someone's keeping you accountable to make sure you're not overdoing it. You're not um, 
doing things that is doing more harm than good for you by overworking or not getting enough sleep and things. But then on top of that, you know, um, as our therapist, uh, uh, Shay Rains, she says, if you're breathing and if the day ends with a Y, you need therapy because it's like one of those that you don't realize it could be something from childhood that's affecting you. Uh, anything you need to have that person that is that neutral uh, person you can go to that you can talk to because friends and family are great, but a lot of times they can't be your therapist. They can't yeah. be the ones to help you navigate your mental health. They can be there to listen, to give you advice, but a lot of times that's not giving you everything you need. So being open to therapy, a uh, as Marcy said, a lot of corporations have EAP. They give you free therapy sessions to kind of help you start the path, but then also find ways that, hey, these things make me feel better, whether it's swimming, whether it's running, whether it's reading, and dedicate that time to yourself because that helps you both mentally and physically by giving yourself that break you need. And then my last thing, you get vacation for a reason. <laughs> I know so many people from working corporate for 20 some years. They will like not take a vacation day. And I'm like, I don't know if you're trying to win Guinness Book of Records of no vacation days, but take that time off. Whether it's a staycation that you're just taking off and staying in town, that you can go and go to the aquarium, go to the botanical gardens, Take that time for yourself to oh my get God. together. Preach, Dana, preach. <laughs> Staycation. uh, Staycations. But if I will, Dana, I love what you just said there. But, you know, again, we're talking about um, <clears throat> on a scale of uh, larger institutions having EAP programs. But for our creative artists and for our entrepreneurs, even like Facebook groups and networks. Yes, yes. So places that people can look to for resources and a hand. So I, I again, I want to kind of condense that to explore and get creative with those options, but you're not alone. Oops, sorry. There's Absolutely. More. And let me make sure for our, for our sake of time, because there's so many great things. I want each of you to give one actionable item that our audience can do in regards to working towards better organization, whether it's for their work, their life, or their wellness, mental wellness. So any of those. So uh, Blossom, what would you say is the one thing? Uh, I would say it's, you know, um, the calendaring. I think, um, you know, too few people do it. Um, uh, you know, just get really, really good with calendaring, including calendaring your time with yourself. And, you know, okay, just, yeah. That. Make sure a calendar date with yourself as well. Yeah, I, that, that's on my list to do. Marcy, what about you? Keep yourself real. Do that inventory. Talk to a few people closest in your network, the people that will tell you the truth and find out where your blind spots are. You can't correct what you don't know. So if there's something that maybe you think you're really good with your time management in certain areas, but other people feel like you're not showing up, you got to find that out. So be willing to have um, a reality check with yourself. I love that. That has a lot to do with uh, what you mentioned, Marcy, about being present. You can show up and not be present. So that's what, that's huge. Because, you know, that's, that, I think you would enjoy whatever's going on more if you were present, right? So that's huge. So, okay. So we've got calendar and we've got check with your network, check with the truth tellers in your community yeah. <laughs> that will, who will tell you the truth about whether or not you're present and what else that they see in terms of blind spots. Dana, what about you? Um, in alignment with those two, being open to other options uh, because a lot of people get stuck in their ways or things that uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but they don't realize it is breaking things because it's taking longer. Your productivity is not there and you're not taking time for yourself. You may have to learn how to implement and be taught technology like OneNote or utilizing a virtual calendar versus a paper calendar. 
things like that. Being open to those things because you once you do that, you can realize where you can gain your time back and your organization, both in your personal life and your professional life. Absolutely. And I'm going to say touch things once. Yes. If possible. And go west to gain three hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time that you'll get 27 hours in a day. So, or go all the way uh, to Hawaii and you gain six hours. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, but I really appreciate the conversation. Marcy, Blossom, Dana, you guys did a wonderful job. Just thank you for sharing your stories. And all of the things that you're doing and still working on. It was really a pleasure. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to, I don't know if it's CC. Uh, uh, see, I, I'm basically going to uh, wrap things up. I like to thank everybody for joining. Maria saying she agreed countering was her first step of becoming more organized and intentional. A lot of people don't realize how important something Yay. like that is. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, once again, thank you for tuning in. If you missed any of the other, uh, you know, talent um, development sessions that we've had with Sue Ann, you can find them on our YouTube page. Go to our YouTube, type in Moana Nui Podcast. You will find all of our previous episodes for under... Um, our professional development uh, channel there, but then you can find some of our other episodes from panels that we talk about Marvel and DC. Uh, for those that are fans of that, we have our sports um, segment that we have a panel of sports fans talking about everything that is sports. And then we also have our mental health segment with um, Shay Rains. Um, she previously just talked about burnout a lot of people don't realize the mental um what how it affects you mentally when you have burnout so um it definitely tune in to those episodes so you can learn more um you'll see our rain talks channel under our youtube channel that you can watch that so definitely go to moana nui podcast uh you can like subscribe and hit the notifications that it will let you know what episodes that are coming down and that way you can know when our next episode with sue ann will be uh for the month of december so you can have that ready to remind you to uh join and tune in and watch but once again um blossom and marcy can you tell the audience of any way they can follow you or your um your business or anything you're associated with that they can support I told you I'm so in a protection program, so <laughs> <laughs> in your mind, oh my goodness, right? <laughs> but I am on. LinkedIn. Oh my goodness, I am on LinkedIn, uh, but I'm very intentional about who I connect with. I need to have an interaction. I'm yes. not a person; I am service. So if somebody connects with me, I would ask that they just message me and let them let me know that that we are part of this program tonight, and that's how we relate. So I can reach out to you as well. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And Blossom, what about same you? Here. Yeah, same here. I'm on LinkedIn. That's usually my go-to. I'm horrible at the other places, but LinkedIn is my go-to. And just connect with me and mention um, Sue Ann, the rock star, and um, this program, and I definitely will connect. Uh, yes. And Maria, thank you for all your lovely comments, um, Maria Bailey. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then, of course, I always have to say, um, please make sure you go to capwa.org's uh, website. You can hit that lovely um, button on their site that says donate. That's the organization that Sue Ann's part of that you can donate to help make more programs and things that th that organization is making uh, that make it happen for so many women within the community. And then, of course, uh, if you contact through there and say, hey, I love the stuff that Sue Ann's talking about. I would love to see how we can have her come to our company and we can make a donation to Capwa uh, for her doing that. Do that. So uh, <laughs> that's my. I don't plug. need a publicist. I got one right here. So. <laughs> because you'll definitely find so much value as you as watching this episode. You can find the value with that with Sue Ann because she's done several things for my company, and we love um, the 
rapport that we have with her and Capwa. So uh, you can easily do it with your organizations also. So with that, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great evening. And of course, with this going into the holidays next week, please be safe and uh, and tell those that are around you and a part of your life that you love and you care about them and check in on them because it is that time of year. Depression starts kicking in. So please check on those loved ones. A, a, a few minutes of just checking in can go a long way. So please do that. And if you, you worry about your own self, definitely look into your EAP. But also, if you don't have EAP, there's so many outlets out there that do virtual um, uh, therapists. Go there, book on a session, and talk to someone. And that way, you can have that additional anchor to keep you grounded and help you um, in your journey also. And so with that, everyone, have a great evening and have a great holiday week next Happy week. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If they won't tell it, we will If this the land of the free, it was a freedom then When they annexed Hawaii and called it Seagull Lands Without any type of payment and no signing off Called themselves the Republic in 1894 1.2 million acres overtaken from the native Hawaiians When they resisted, the West retaliated in violence and erasure The Hawaiian language is banned As part of colonialism's plan to expand, yeah Stuck between a rock and a hard place Multiple bombings of Kohola They, as a part of their ongoing war with Asia Used it as a place for target practice No consent or compensation Colonizers call for annexation No work out for all the locals School will never let you know So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will Too many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will We will So if we put Hawaii in a perspective where well, black and Asian history is interconnected Considering the fight with the Pacific then of course, versus Asia, they was treated as a middleman for war But didn't let the western colorism run its course Cause dark skin was a sign of dignity to call The land was taken in the name of capitalism When prior to it was an actual kingdom Clap back at the system Stuck between a rock and a hard place Multiple bombings of Kohola Bay As a part of their ongoing war with Asia Used it as a place for target practice No consent or compensation Colonizers call for annexation no work out for all the locals, school will never let you know So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf if if he won't tell it, we will Too many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If he won't tell it, we 